Hello, it's Craig on my R2 channel, and uh, this video I think is going to be my last video on the 232 functions, just to tie up some loose ends on some information that I think is kind of relevant. Uh, this is my wiring diagram for the two to three legged functions. Um, nothing over complicated here, it's just simply a dual pole, dual throw switch, which acts as a forward reverse switch that operates these two motors for these two separate functions. Um, the switch gets flipped, polarity, certain polarity goes to this motor and this motor and they both control their functions until limit switches are hit. Then you flip this switch the other way, polarity is reversed and they go the other way until the other limit switches are hit. Um, on this design I threw a diode in here um, because the two side legs have to draw in and hit the limit switch before the middle foot retracts and this was a method I implemented on my blue and white R2. I have another method that I used where there was a fifth limit switch in the middle here somewhere tied in. I would have to dr uh, drag out the, the, the uh, diagram of how I did that. But that fifth limit switch allowed somehow, <laughs> I'd have to research it, uh, where the side legs came in or pretty much, yeah, it, it drew in before the middle leg. That one somehow failed. And I don't know if that was a wiring error on my part. It, it, it had worked for years. I had done hundreds of transitions. And then one year at Discovery World, that droid did a face plant because the middle foot started going up before the side legs drew in. So um, I'm going to have to gut that thing and see what failed. I'm thinking it's just a limit switch failed. But um, that's how I did the, the wiring here. No complicated circuit boards, programming. It's just simple motor functions and limit switches. And we'll take a look at some other uh, details on the 232 that I implemented. So this right here is my dual pole, dual throw switch. Um, it's not really a dual pole, dual throw switch. What it is, it's two micro switches, which have a common, a normally open, and a normally closed. And when you put two of them together, it makes a dual pole, dual throw. Um, so this one, uh, this is from the what the heck was I thinking files. Um, this servo right here has a wheel with two flat spots, and then those flat spots simultaneously hit both switches at once, and the round spots simultaneously, um, you know, push them in at once. I don't know what I was thinking here. What I should have just done was I should have just taken both of those limit switches and piggybacked them together and had the same flat spot hitting the same a uh, pair of switches at the same time on one side. So that's my dual pole, dual throw, uh, servo controlled. So when I, uh, when I, when I turn a, a, a flip a switch on the remote, that servo turns and uh, creates the function. So there's two things happening back here that are very important. Um, so there's this big giant lever uh, in here that attaches to that pipe and the cables. Uh, function that lever. I, um, I put a big giant bolt through that lever and that bolt hits physical stops on that end and up here on the top end. And I think that's very important because if we were to have some sort of catastrophic failure here, if that motor down there was to rip off of its mounts, if the gears inside that motor were to strip if the shaft coming out of that motor was to snap, if this cable was off uh, this uh, motor to the uh, lever here were to fail, the droid could potentially just catastrophically um, fall down in a, in a way where, well here, let me just do this as an example. If it was in three-legged uh, three mode like this and there was something that were to happen, it would just do that. But by having this physical stop right here, when it comes to three-legged mode and hits this stop, it's going to stay there. There's really no stress on that whole motor cable mechanism when it's in three-legged mode. And then here's another thing here is I have a, a spring down in here. This spring is under um, a, a pretty good amount of tension. 
Um, when the droid goes into three-legged mode, gravity kind of takes over. Um, the the legs angle back, the batter, the body comes forward, and the shoulder pivot here, as it comes forward, it kind of goes down. So it's very easy for the motor to take this kind of scissor mechanism droid and bring it down into the three-legged mode. But when you're drawing it back up, you're kind of fighting gravity bringing it back in. And not so much on the middle foot, but the whole, you know, uh, two legs in the body. So this is kind of like a garage door spring in here. Um, the motor is working a little bit to put it into three-legged mode. The What counters that is when it goes into two-legged mode, now the spring is helping. So instead of just fighting gravity and it's all work drawing it back up, you got a helper spring. It's like a garage door spring. Um, if you didn't have a garage door spring, you'd be fighting gravity, um, pulling the garage door up, and then gravity would be helping you pulling it down. A garage door spring makes it equal effort um, pulling it up or bringing it down. And this kind of does the same thing, um, a helper spring. So the motor is working equally going from two-legged mode to three-legged mode. Uh, and that's very beneficial. I came across this the other day. Um, on my other video, I was talking about the leg rods coming down here and attaching at a point. And there's the point right there. Here's the mount for the old leg rod as it kind of dog-legged, went through this slot and attached inside the the uh, the foot here. Um, I left that there just to, you know, for posterity's sake. Um, much better design on my 232. Uh, so I think that's about it on 232 functions. Um, so I will end it there. Um, I'd like to do some more videos on uh, electronics, RC, and whatnot, but uh, I think that kind of wraps up the 232 portion of this crazy journey on droid building. Catch you later. Bye.